So if you did the exam well, and from the students, I came to know that the exam was more related to tough in difficulty level. As always, I know exams will be more related to tough. It will never be so easy for anyone. So be calm regarding that. And again, regarding the recalls, please remember that the recall videos are obtained from the information which are given by the students who have given the exam. So there might be some errors in options or questions. So you cannot use it for calculating your scores. The idea behind doing a recall is not to calculate the scores. It is to improve yourself or for people who have been given the exam. It will help you to understand which all topics were covered in the exam and what was asked in this exam. Okay, so we will start. The first question is a very simple, straightforward one, which is a mixture from radiology as well as from pediatrics. A tame baby presenting with respiratory distress, which resource spontaneously. And there was a bulging lung fissure. So that means there is fluid in the fissure and it resolves automatically after 48 hours. So what does that mean? That means this is a case of transient tachypnea of pneumon. We have already discussed that. So the baby will not get time to expel the entire amount of fluid. So there will be some fluid remaining in the costophrenic angle or in the horizontal fissure. So the fissure appears bulged up. So this is regarding transient tachypnea of newborn. So that was the concept here. And for if it has to be neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, there should be history of there should be history of a preterm delivery. Okay, preterm. And meconium aspiration is commonly seen in postterm. So this is the answer. A very direct, straightforward question. Second one was again a simple one because there is a history of a 13-year-old young child with a, a diaphyseal lesion. So there is some lesion in diaphysis. So pediatric age group diaphyseal lesion, two possible differential. One can be a heaving sarcoma. Another can be an osteomyelitis. So there is a history of raised DSR, fever, many things are there. And you know, heavings can have raised DSR, osteomyelitis can have raised DSR. So anything is possible in a diaphyseal or metadiaphyseal lesion. So now, Coming to the concept, they are asking, what will you do next? Okay, what will you do next? You know, you will never go for PET after an X-ray. You will in investigate further. Now, the concept, the difference is the, the difficult part is you have to choose between biopsy and MRI. So that is the part. And remember when I, I have already, always told you in class, for all bone lesion, the first investigation of choice is a radiograph. The second investigation will be an MRI, except osteodosteoma. And finally, the investigation of choice will be, so the gold standard will be biopsy. So they are asking you, what will you do next? So always remember, next we will do MRI. MRI will be the answer because you have to characterize. You should get an idea whether this is an abscess or whether it is an osteomyelitis or whether this is a events or any neoplastic lesion. So we will do MRI. Only after doing an MRI, you will go for biopsy. That is the concept. So X-ray, then MRI, then biopsy. So this is the order. So please remember the order. So this is the order. Okay. So this is something we always discuss in our class. Okay. The first investigation for any bone or air containing pathology will be a radiograph. And for bones, we will do MRI for all the following conditions. Okay, so this is a table that we already discussed in our workbook. Now, another simple straightforward one. A patient, uh, some were telling there was the history of smoking was present. That is not important. History of tingling, numbness, vision problem. Vision problem is because of ptosis, Horner syndrome. Okay, Horner syndrome. And you can see there is a mass lesion in the region of right lung apex. Okay, so this was some... So the image might be different, but they were aiming to show you a pancos tumor in a radiograph. So what is the definite investigation for diagnosis? So you know, when you are suspecting a pancos tumor, you can do MRI for further characterizing or to rule out that brachial plexus invasion. But they are asking you the definitive diagnosis. So definitive diagnosis means you have to confirm it with the help of biopsy. So CT gated biopsy will be helpful for getting the definite diagnosis for all lung cancer. Even if you are not thinking about pancos tumor, it should it could be any other tumor. For any tumor, for any lung tumor, the investigation of choice will be a contrast enhanced CT and gold standard for definitive diagnosis. You have to go for you have to go for a CT gated or a bronchoscopy gated biopsy. You have to go for a biopsy. Again, this is something that we have already discussed in our workbook. Okay. 
definitive diagnosis can be given only through histopathological confirmation. So biopsy will be the answer. Again, a question from RSC. Three questions from RS. That is why when we are doing the workbook of RS, it is it seems to be a lengthy or a large chapter because there will be multiple questions from respiratory system. Again, a patient with a fever, cough, and the history of retrovirus positivity. That means the patient is immunodeficient. So the immunodeficient patient, and most of them were telling that trachea was not shifted, but there was an opacity here. So right lung lesion, sorry, lung apical lesion. When you are suspecting, it could be a collapse or consolidation, whatever it is. But the thing is, present patient is having hemoptysis, is immune deficiency the first and foremost thing that should come to your mind should be tuberculosis now coming to lung abscess you should see a air fluid level you should see a lesion with air fluid level metastasis will be always multiple metastasis will be always multiple so this is what is about ruling out the options even if you're not confident you can easily rule out by using your logic Okay, that is the concept. And AIMS exam, they need you to think. They need you to go beyond your workbooks and think. And this is actually something which is straight from the books. Okay. And because, you know, when we discussed RS, we have discussed about upper lobe collapse. In India, I have always, I keep on telling that in India, the most common cause of collapse is tuberculosis. That is cicatrical collapse because of fibrosis. Okay, that is the concept here. Now, again, whenever we are discussing the Central nervous system, CNS, I always tell, even if you are not planning to read anything else, please read about EDH, SDH, and SAH. So again, every year you will get a question from EDH or SDH or SAH. And here the patient was having history of vomiting, unconscious. So the patient is having side effects because of midline shift or any kind of mass effect. So you have to intervene, you have to operate. And there is a confusion. Some of them were telling that there was an option of craniotomy. Some were telling the option was craniectomy. Both are different. Craniectomy and craniotomy both are different. So remember, if the option was craniotomy, it will be definitely the answer. But if the option was craniectomy, then it will not be the answer. The answer will be bird hole and evacuation. So remember, if there is an option of craniotomy, it will be better than doing a bird hole because it will help you to evacuate the clot by doing a craniotomy. But if the option was craniectomy, because there was a confusion, some students were telling the option was craniotomy, some were telling it was craniectomy. Craniectomy is done usually for multiple conditions or tumors or to relieve the mass effect only. But craniotomy helped to evacuate the clot. So craniotomy more than birth hole. So if the option was craniotomy, then it is craniotomy. If the option was craniectomy, then it would be birth hole evacuation. So it will entirely depend upon the option given. Moving forward, this is something we already discussed in our classes. You have to, uh, if there is mass effect or if there is volume more than 30 cc, you have to evacuate either with the craniotomy or with the bar hole. Now, again, one more question from RS. This is actually, it will come under emergency radiology or emergency medicine. A patient after RTA, you are seeing a pneumothorax. You are seeing a pneumothorax. What is the management? So, I remember, if the vitals are stable, you have time to put an ICD. If in the question, if they are given that the patient's vital, vitals are unstable, there is signs of uh, Beck's triad, like anything of mass effect or vascular compression, you have to go for urgent needle thoracostomy. But most of them were telling that there was no uh, urgent signs were there. So if there are no urgent signs, you know, if it is not an acute emergency, you have time to put an ICD tube. That is the definitive management. So that is a definitive management. It will help to drain the air or uh, blood, which is located within the thoracic uh, new uh, pleural cavity that is the concept here again a very simple straightforward question from radiology or emergency medicine part again something which we usually tell in respiratory system now this was something actually very difficult but very easy to rule out if you know the concept because a period, they were telling that there was a history of a child with the history of pancreatitis you know pancreatitis is very rare in children and uh, Usual causes of pancreatitis will be gallstones or alcohol abuse. So when you are dealing with the pediatric child with uh, pancreatitis, 
it should be something congenital mostly it should be something more congenital so you can easily rule out chronic pancreatitis because it is not common in pediatric age group then the differences will be between called local cyst or annular pancreas or pancreatic division among this pancreatic defectism is one of the most common cause so if you know that then you can easily go for pancreatic defectism or if you know to tell the anatomy that is see this is the common bile duct this is the main pancreatic duct so usually the common bile duct and main pancreatic duct will open together in the region of ambula of waiter but what happens in divism is it will divides into two and the main duct will open above into the minor papilla so this is what is called as pancreatic divism so there will be two ducts one dorsal duct and one ventral duct the ventral duct will open into the major ampulla of waiter so this is how there will be two decks so if you are able to see two decks then it could be mostly pancreatic divism instead if it was like that a cystic pouch like appearance was there in the image definitely it will be called local cyst again it will depend upon the image but most commonly in our day to day life we will be seeing more cases of pancreatic divism rather than the called local cyst and we were discussing about the cold doctor test in our last t and d on last sunday you remember anyone remember we were discussing about the types of cold doctor test and rodanis classification in our last week and coming to annular pancreas what happens in annular pancreas the pancreas will be seen like this and inside the pancreas there will be second portion of duodenum so the pancreas will be circumscribing or it will be encasing or engulfing the second portion of duodenum now this is called as annular pancreas now this is again a tricky question a patient is coming with a history of uh, personality changes there is history of coriform movements so there is chorea involved there is coriform movements are there so you know some causes of chorea one important causes of chorea for our exams is always huntington's chorea and when they are giving you an mri image it is usually to make you identify one classical sign is there that is called as box car ventricles the ventricles will be vertical and it will be having a box car like appearance so box car ventricles is the sign that is seen in huntington's chorea so among chorea most commonly the answer will be huntington's chorea and you, they will give you an image of box car type of ventricles this is again something which is a previous year topic usually they will ask this in pre uh, this is again a p by q okay we have discussed this in many of our uh, sessions and uh, this is again a very important question now this is again a tricky question and you know every year aims people or ina people will come with something new they are very fond of anatomy this is something which is related with anatomy again the answer will depend upon the marked structure if they have marked this then it will be carotid canal if it was this because this is right carotid canal this is the left carotid canal instead if they were marking this then this portion is called as the iac internal acoustic meatus through which the seventh and eighth cranial nerves enter into the ear so if it was blue arrow then it will be internal acoustic meatus external everyone know this is the external acoustic meatus so that will be the external acoustic meatus and the vestibular aqueduct will be the small one okay the small one will be the vestibular aqueduct again this is an anatomy based question and it will entirely depend where the arrow was most of the students were telling that the arrow was seen here so mostly that could be a carotid canal imagine if the arrow was here this is the internal acoustic meatus through which the cranial nerves that is the 7th and 8th cranial nerve exit so there were around eight questions from radiology most of them around five to six of them were direct questions which we already discussed multiple times in our multiple sessions and these two last two questions of pancreatic divism and this anatomical question you can always expect something new in all the new, in exams so this is very usual and it will be very difficult for the fellow students also so don't worry keep studying keep revising our next exam will be coming in short time so be positive keep your moods on study well and all the best guys don't worry don't keep these things in mind be free be happy study learn one so thank you so much we will wind up here thank you so much